welcome to Kids Sketch, where we're exploring the built environment around San Diego, and today we're heading to Balboa Park's Spreckles Organ Pavilion. Let's go way back to 1914 with the very successful and wealthy businessman John D. Spreckles, who was an avid or organist with a large pipe organ in his mansion in Coronado, just west of downtown San Diego. The Panama, California Exposition was in the planning stages at Balboa Park, and Spreckles had a vision to have a large outdoor organ that would bring quality live music to San Diego. And as his gift to, as he puts it, the people of San Diego and to the people of all the world, Spreckles chose the architect Harrison Albright to design the organ pavilion, who fashioned the building in an ornate Italian Renaissance design, considered the world's largest pipe organ in a fully outdoor venue. Construction was completed in time for the 1915 Panama, California Exposition and is located at the corner of President's Way and Pan American Road East in the park. Albright situated the pavilion to face north to protect the pipes from the sunlight. The audience, therefore, faces south. The organ itself was built by Austin Organs Incorporated. When it opened in 1915, the organ had a console, that's where the organist sits, that controlled 3,400 pipes. These pipes ranged from small ones the size of a pencil to the largest at 32 feet long. It also had 48 ranks, five divisions, four manuals, 44 stops, 58 registers, and a pedal keyboard. If you're anything like me, I didn't know what any of that meant, except I know what a pipe is, and I can see them on the front of the organ, mm, except it turns out those pipes are fake, but let me get back to that later. I used to think the pipe organ was similar to a piano because they both had keyboards, but I was way off. The organ is a wind instrument, and the simplest way to think of a pipe organ is to first think of a pan pipe. Let's go way back in time again, way back. A pan pipe is a musical wind instrument first used by the ancient Greeks, consisting of hollow tubes of different lengths tied together. It's played by holding the instrument in both hands and blowing across the top end of each tube. Different notes were produced with different lengths of tubes. Let's listen. Well, the pipe organ was invented when someone decided to play a set of pan pipes with a keyboard instead of blowing into each pipe. Think of it as someone turning the pipes upside down and placing them into holes on a box. The box is called a wind chest. And instead of blowing into the box, a bellows was attached to provide the wind. This is a simple version called a portative because the musician could carry it around. According to paintings and stained glass windows, portatives were particularly popular with angels. Let's watch and listen while Catalina Vicens plays a portative. to listen to her play this longer, but let's move on to modern times and our own Spreckles pipe organ. The movement of the bellows has been replaced by an electric blower that fills the wind chest full of air. The Spreckles wind chest is big enough to walk in, and that simple keyboard has turned into four keyboards and enough levers and stops to compete with the complexity of the controls of a jet plane. The pipe organ is a full body sport because not only is the organist playing with both arms and hands, but both legs and feet are fully engaged. Let me get back to my earlier comment that those lovely golden pipes are just for show. Only 15 of the 63 golden pipes on the organ's facade are functional. The remaining thousands of pipes are hidden from view in the pavilion's second floor. The various kinds of pipes are designed to mimic the sounds of strings, brass, and woodwinds, creating the effect of a full orchestra, all through the wind billowing in its pipes. The organist also controls dozens of unusual instruments like a xylophone, glockenspiel, gong, train whistles, doorbell. Those are for silent movie sound effects. So there you have it, 
The pipe organ is a big box of whistles and can make thousands of sounds. The one sound it does not make is the commercial airplane noises, and those are just added embellishments from the planes flying overhead to nearby San Diego Lindbergh Field. Now let's get started sketching the parts of the organ pavilion that we can see. This will be an interesting composition because it's such a horizontal building with this big mass in the middle. We could start with the big mass, but we're going to start with this horizontal band because we've only got so much room for it. And we do want to try to keep our proportions of that correct with the big mass in the middle. So let's start and make a horizontal line across your sheet. I'm going to make mine not halfway up, about a third of the way up from the bottom. And just take it all the way across. I don't know about you, but I'm using the edge of the sketchbook to guide my hand. I just rest it against there and I go across. All right. Now, I want to make a second line just above the first. And how far up above? About the thickness of that pencil. I'm going to make a little tick mark. Is that right? Maybe a little bigger than that. And I'm going to make an, a line parallel, and I'm going to do the same thing. My finger against the edge of the sketchbook is my guide. Okay, how's that? Now let's go ahead and put the big block in the middle. I'm, I really feel like I'm cheating with this photo here because well, all I have to do is sort of line up my lines with the photo and carry it down. And that's the width. Now let's find the height. We take the height of those two lines in the photo and compare it with the upper part of the building. One, two. It's about twice the height to get to that outer edge and make a little square or make a horizontal line there. If you want to find the middle of your shape, make an X through it, and there's your middle. I didn't do a very good X. There. And that's going to help us find that, that ridge, because that slopes up. A good way to find the ridge, if you don't trust your eye to just sketch it in, is hold your pencil there and test it and then do the same on the other side. All right, we've done a horizontal line. We've gone up, looks like about the thickness of my pencil. If I were using a number two, take a pencil, it'd be a little thicker. And then we made this rectangle in the middle, which is looked like it was about two times, two more times the height of what we first sketched. I'd like to block in the arch in the middle. And what I'm going to ask you to do now is make another X on this left side. That'll help you divide this little rectangle into four pieces. Can you see the four pieces I'm talking about? I'm going to erase some of these lines. There. And the reason that I'm doing that is because I want to get the proportions of this arch. Its spring line is just above our first two lines. Our spring line is the point at which the vertical stops and the curvy part starts. But it's not half of that. If I measure the width from the edge of the building, to the opening of that arch, and then compare it to the center section, I see they're not equal. And that means it's not going to be one-third, one-third, one-third. So let's use our eyes. It looks like the section in the middle is a little wider than the two outer sections. But what I'm going to suggest that you do is come in just a little from here, and come in just from a little from here. And that's going to be that middle portion where the organ lives, or the pipes are. 
be not so real pipes. They're real pipes, they're just not active pipes. Okay, we've got that blocked out. So that we don't, we, we work the whole sketch up together. The next thing I'm gonna suggest we do is to come way over here at the end and we're gonna make some rectangles. And go ahead and go out as far as you want. You, you don't have to go out. I, I went a little far, I think maybe. I'm gonna leave, I'm gonna pull back just a little so that I have some room for the edge over here and maybe some shrubbery that's showing up here. It looks to me like the width of this, is it about two times the height? I'm gonna try that again. Finger is slipping. No, it's just a little wider. So if I measure this and come over here, go a little wider and then split it in half. You see what it is? We're looking at this square shape but we're seeing it at an angle. So we're seeing two sides and they're foreshortened. We're just gonna block those out because I'll show you the next thing we wanna do. We're gonna do the same thing at the other end. Now it's a symmetrical sketch. So whatever you did on the left, go ahead and do it on the right. Great, look, it's charming already. And even if your lines aren't aren't level or aren't completely parallel, that'll give your sketch some character. So the next thing that we're going to do is, do you see all these little columns in here? I happened to count them up beforehand and there's 11 spaces, um, but we don't like to divvy up uneven numbers. There's an edge over here that's sort of solid. So we're gonna count that as one column spacing. And actually you can see going from the edge here to that first column. We'll count that as one. So what that means is that there are 12 spaces. So right here in the middle, make a line. In this rectangle, I just want you to eyeball, make two lines so that you have three spaces. Over here, make two lines. We have three more spaces. Okay, now divide them in half. And now you're going to have 12 equal column spaces. You got these two things down here. I'll put a little Archie on them so that we know that's the thing at the end. It's a little arch thing going just to remind us that's the thing at the end. And we'll do the same thing over here. Something in the middle, eyeball it, divide it into three. This one divided into three, and then each one in half again. Now you can see your colonnade forming. Now what should we do? I think we should work on the top of the colonnade. The lines as they go across, there's a little bit of detail. They're a little ornate, so let's start to add some, some more detail in that. Underneath this line, make another line. And it gets to these two end pieces. And we make two little bumps. Same thing over here. That's the easy thing about symmetrical sketches. What you do on one side, you do on the other. And then let's make another line below it, really close. Great. Uh, let's add some funny little pearly Q things here. You see how there's like a sort of a parapet. Our image is so small, we don't have to be exact. We just want to give the hint of what's going on. And if you zoom in, oh my gosh, there's so many fun little things sort of sticking up from this. We'll get to that in a little bit. Let's do the same thing over here. Funny little thing, and they're little. They poke up, but they're not very big. So try not to make anything too big in this. 
that's kind of the challenging thing on this is trying to keep everything a little on the on the small side because even though certain parts have more importance than other parts there all the pieces want to stay tiny now if you want to make your columns look like columns put a second little line very close to the first lines we'll come back in in a minute and do some horizontal lines that should complete those 24 columns but you know if you don't have 24 columns in your sketch no one's going to know. Now's a good time to erase any stray lines or any lines that you've shot over the edge of your sketch. You know you're dying to get in there and add detail to that roof line. It, at least I am. So let's do it. We're going to add some more lines. See how that the slope it slopes down and then it kind of levels off? So let's slope down and level off. Then add some more lines above because there's some thickness to this. And you can add some lines below. Look at how those got some cool little, I don't know what they are, but some little details there that are just tiny. All right, shall we get to the, to the arch part? So inside this arched opening, there is this rectangle that is white and gold near the bottom. And it's got a small rectangle, a big rectangle, and a small rectangle. The organs console is so tiny in our in our photo, and there's two people standing next to it. It's up to you if you want to add it. This is a holiday sketch. You can sketch the organ pavilion exactly as you're seeing it with the organ pipes, which has like a little arch there, dips down, up, dips down, up, down, symmetrically. And then we're gonna can fill in the little pipelines, pipes. Well, you can leave that part alone for now, and you can make it part of your holiday card. You could put a wreath in there. You could put a star in there. You could put a menorah in there, or you could leave the pipes. And it's it's easy to get this, this larger arch in there. Just mimic the first one you sketched in, close to it. And then it just gets bigger because you'll add a few more lines. Sometimes it's easier to start in the middle and make your arch go one side and then the other side. Sometimes that's easier than, than starting on one side going to the other. You'll find what works best for you. Sometimes it's easier to pull down from the top than to push up. When we get to the ink, that you'll see that there's some dark areas. So it's like sort of some flowery, not flowery, curly cue things in there. We don't want to get too much detail on that because that'll distract from the overall. All right. There are some little things in here that might be kind of fun to add. It's like a box with a little thing at the top. And then there are the plaques. One of them says, to the people of San Diego, this pavilion and organ are presented to them and the people of all the world. This pavilion and organ are dedicated by John D. Spreckles and Adolf Spreckles, January 1st, 1915. It's certainly a fun building to go visit. And you know that every Sunday at 2 p.m., come rain or shine, they're having a free concert. If you live in the area, it'd be fun to go. And if you're visiting the area, know that they always have them on Sundays. Okay, let's put some of the lower stuff in. Just a little line underneath it. And just make a line going straight across until we get to the end here. 
I might go all the way to the top, just stop near the end. So you, we can't see them in this, in this photograph, but there are some steps that lead up to, to the ends of each of these. And so I think it'd be fun to, to sketch in some sketch, some steps, even though we don't see them. So you'll make a little rectangle, and then you'll make a slightly wider rectangle, and then a slightly wider rectangle again. And that's showing that there's some steps going in all the different directions. Another line going across. And then you'll make skinny rectangle, skinny rectangle a little bit wider, skinny rectangle a little bit wider. Okay, how about some fun with these crazy benches? So, of course, when I, I took this photograph, I used the panorama view, which made the benches look curvy. You can make your benches look curvy, but I'm thinking I'd like to just ignore it. I'm, um, the curvy, I might just make straight lines. So I'm going to make two lines that are a little bit angled, coming right off the face of the organ pavilion. That first one, Seems to be right about here, like a slight angle. This other one, same spot over there, but goes the other direction. And then I'm just gonna start making some rectangles. These are the benches. I started with the, I just make a little line and a vertical line and then I go over horizontally. I'm not going all the way to the ends, just because I don't want to. And the benches, not just because I think it'll look better in the sketch. So here are some benches. I'm offsetting the ends of the benches a little. They're, the rectangles, the benches are overlapping each other. So it's just a series of horizontal lines. I'll make about four of them, like that. Okay, so we're done with that part. Now, what would we like to do? We could go through here and acknowledge that there are these cool little things that are just some sort of adornments coming up on there. And if we were up close, they'd probably be fussier, but for us, they just need to be a little tick mark with our pencil. And when we get to using ink, we're going to make them kind of like that. Make sure you add a couple of spiky things at either end. It's giving it a lot of character. And there's a spiky thing here and a spiky thing at either ends of this gable. So we are getting close to done. Um, with the building itself, but how about some landscaping? So there's some nice shrubbery that you see through the ar the arcade. And you get to decide. I think it's really interesting how blue sky is showing through here and some blue sky, we don't see it here. But it'll be interesting in our sketch if we um, show as much blue as we want to. You could skip the trees and just do clouds, but, but I kind of like how the trees are in the background like that. I'm just making some squiggly lines. You see how there's sort of a circular form here and a circle here with the trunk below and another circle, circle, and then lower there's some, some circular forms. So there's our first one and, and here's our second one. And we don't need to be completely accurate. It's it's whatever of these little blobs you'd like to do. There's some lower shrubs here that go down like that. There's another tree here. And these look like pine trees. I don't know if they're Tory pine trees, which would be pretty far south and inland, but they seem to be some sort of pine tree. And if this is a holiday card that you want to make, you could make them 
You could make them Christmassy trees if you wanted to. I'm going to put a little border here at the top. And the trees down here are short, but maybe I'd like to make them a little taller. And you can make them just as you see them, or you can make them taller as well. It's such a symmetrical sketch that it might be kind of fun to make the trees a little bit symmetrical as well. All right, now holiday choices, holiday card choices. You could make a star up top here. Maybe you know how to make a, a star up. Start at about five o'clock on the clock, up to noon, down to seven, up to two, over to about 10, and back down to five. I can do that again. Another thing we could do, I'm using an eraser, is, is to put a big wreath in here, which would just be a circle and a circle with a bunch of little circles, which would be the holly berry. But I think for mine, I think that I'm going to let the star on top be enough holiday greeting. And then I'll sketch those in. I've left room at the bottom here for some sort of um, some sort of greeting that will do in ink. I uh, haven't decided what I'm going to say. All right, are we ready to go on to the ink? With a sketch this small, this much detail, this is a really good time to use one of your skinnier pens. Of course, this is a skinny pen I always use, so it's a extra fine rolling ball, five point. I'd say let's start with the shape in the middle and sort of retrace our steps. You can have a, a squiggly hand for some of these areas. See how there were those interesting little things going on? Something this small, you can, something this small, the lines wanna be pretty parallel, but they don't have to be super straight and they could be broken and sketchy. So you wanna keep some of these lines a little closer together. See how it's darker there, a little shadow line. And if you had a little squiggly line in here, whatever that funny thing is up top. These things are cool. Okay, how about, how about we take our some of our horizontal lines across here. Get to those bumps, those arches. Again, I'm breaking them up a little. I'm trying to keep them very close together though. That top one, if you wanna really break it up, that'd be good because it seems like it's like a railing or something that we can sort of see through. And these, there seems to be, it's a series of little columns. So if you just make pairs of lines, it, uh, you'll be picking up the character. I just tend to go back and forth. Um, no right or wrong way to put the lines in. on a sketch like this. I 
You notice a couple of times I've actually stopped my pen and it bleeds a little. It's kind of a charming thing to add in your sketch. A lot of people do that at the corners uh, for character. Adding these columns, which are each one's going to be two lines close together. You can fix your spacing if your pencils didn't have it quite as you like it. Do the same thing on the other side. Sometimes the first side is the experimental side and the second side is done a little better. Your second Saturday sketches are Saturdays, around the holidays, um, they will have concerts Sundays, but also on Saturdays. So again, if you live in the area, check the schedule to see when they have special, special organ concerts. And then they also have local um, choirs and church choirs that will come and sing at the organ pavilion, which is a real special treat. They have um, concerts all during the summer. I think a couple of times a week during the summers they'll have concerts and they're definitely worth worth going to listen to, especially now that you've sketched the organ pavilion. It'd be fun to go hear what it sounds like and and what it feels like because I certainly read a number of times that the people who have gone to them said you really have to experience you can feel the vibrations along with hear the vibrations so you see how the arches don't go all the way to the ground there's the plaque underneath it so take your horizontal line all the way to that inside arch First one and the second one lines go down. But the other arches are just up at the top. You might add a few little um, darker areas in a pattern form to, to show, see how it's light in the middle and then there's some darker areas. So you simulate the pattern. Okay. Well, I'll do the rectangles down below. I'm going to make a little rectangle to show the organ. <laughs> Some people, they're so tiny. Okay. And I am putting the pipes in. I'm not making a line around the pipes because remember uh, because they go up and stop, but it's the, the length of my line lines that are are forming that shape. But what I, I I will do is there's not much shade and shadow in this sketch, but I am doing some tonal values. I am shading that in. I guess I really am making lines around there. Okay, let's look at that. All right, now uh, we can do the trees or we can do the benches. And up to you, which you, you choose. I'm going to go ahead and do the benches. 
There's that low wall, the edge of the stage, that walkway. Let's put your benches in, which is just some rectangles. I could have taken a photo when there were a lot of people around. But I didn't want to distract from the building. One of these days we'll do a sketch where it's a real urban sketch and there are lots of people. That's a challenge. There. All right. Now I'm going to outline my star. I'm not going to, I'm just going to follow the outside parts and make it some dots. Hopefully you have some colored pencils and you'll be able to, to color in whatever your holiday shapes are. Now the trees, just some little squiggly and dashed and dotted lines. It's certainly not a, the leaves are not full. We don't have too many deciduous trees here. These look like evergreens, but with the branches not that full. The deciduous trees are the trees that lose their leaves in the winter. And evergreens keep their leaves in the winter. I haven't decided about the clouds either. I'm going to put the boundaries around the edges of the sketch. Sometimes with a little sketch like this where everything is sort of small and, and it's the same sort of squiggly movements with your hand, your hand can get sort of tired and stiff. I say that because my hand's getting tired and stiff. All right, what else do we need to, to add in? If I wanted to add some more branches to this tree, I could. Any of these little ones. I'm, what I'm going to be doing right now is waiting for some of the ink to dry because I'd like to come back in and erase any lines that um, are in pencil so that I can see more clearly how the sketch looks. I don't want to erase over ink that is wet because it'll smear it. I really like this part when we get the rest of the pencil line away and just the ink lines are there. It gives it a lot more character. If you have a kneaded eraser, that works really well and it doesn't generate quite so many erasure crumbs. We're just about done. I'm just about done with all the erasures I have to do. And then when I get out some colored pencils, I want to add some green. I want to add some yellow to the star and some blue to the sky. I think I will not do, do clouds. I'm just going to shade in the blue sky. And I'm using sort of a light blue. Any This is where any blue you have, if you have dark, medium blue, sky blue. Sometimes, uh, let's see, and I'm keeping them horizontal. Our sketch is horizontal, so I'm starting off with horizontal sky. If you've seen, uh, you might see other sketchers are San Diego Architectural Foundation's um, 
favorite sketcher, Polly Di Bartolo, tends to use a lot of vertical lines, or at least I've seen a lot of his really cool skies where he'll use vertical lines and he'll use crazy colors. Like he may make a red sky. And that's where you can have some fun. If you wanted to make this card hand colored in a, in a bunch of them, you could Xerox uh, make a make a copy of the card before you start coloring it in, and then you could color each one, and it makes it look like it's a very personal card for each person that you send it to. You could also use it as a name tag on a gift you might want to give. you guys probably know by now your parents really like to get handmade things so if you made a sketch and gave it to your parents for Christmas they would like that or for holiday or birthday this one might be really fun with fireworks coming out all right now I'm going to get the green and the yellow. If you have markers, those would show up really well. There, nice big star. Uh, the green, I'm just gonna do the same thing, uh, just shading in. I might change the direction a little because the leaves on trees go in lots of different directions. When you get it's behind the columns, you do want to be careful not to color the columns. Otherwise, the plant material won't look like it's in the background. If you have to, you can always go back afterwards and erase the green if it got into some of those parts where the columns are. We can see through those little square things at the end. We're almost finished. The nice thing about having all those places to sit in front of the Oregon Pavilion is, um, and that there's steps. I was standing on some steps, but there's a lot of places to sit, which means that there are a lot of places to get comfortable if you want to go to the Oregon Pavilion and sketch it. It's so nice to sketch from, um, in real life, it's a different experience, but it's really, it's interesting. The difference is, well, so in, when you're sketching from a photograph, the, what you're looking at is stationary, doesn't move around. When you're sitting there, your eye moves and you have to keep remembering what your reference points are. The photograph, our reference point, is there. It's the edge of the photos. And the clouds don't move and the light doesn't change. You know, I think I'm going to use the yellow and add some of the gold accents. I didn't think about that till now. Be a very good sharp. Those pipes aren't actually covered in gold. They're covered in mica. And they were recovered a few years ago. 
to celebrate the 100th anniversary. God, there's a little bit of gold, well, goldish color down the face of the building. And these cool, crazy things up at the top. And then each of the rectangles is got gold around it, and there's gold across the, these horizontal lines. It's not completely gold, so just make some lines of gold. There's some stucco in between. These these curly cues, that's the nature of that um, Italian Renaissance architecture. Oh, there's something we didn't do that would be kind of cool, and it'll show up a little better if you go at it with your pen, but at the top of each column, there's a little something, and it looks gold, but you can you could do it with the pen. You could just do it with your gold pencil, yellow pencil. There's something of interest right there. I want to call it out. Gold around this, the yellow around that, the rectangles. All right. What do we want to call it? This is a holiday card. You could say Spreckles Organ Pavilion, which is what we often do. We could do something fun. Like, um, I think I'm going to write la 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 la. Little exclamation point. How about um, greetings? 